Hey friends, we're on the very last Aura video, part four. This one's gonna be a little bit of a quickie, partially because there's not much to say about it, and partially because I really need a nap. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. I've mentioned in every Aura series video so far that my facts are from Mayo Clinic, and the thing is, if you look at different sources, every source is gonna tell you something a little bit different about what types of migraines exist and what types of aura exist and which um, category each symptom fits into when it comes to migraines or auras. Let me fix that lump. Oh. And what I found kind of weird about all this is even when I was reading the Mayo Clinic website, it said that the rarest form of aura is this one where you get some weakness on one side of the body and then they referred to that as hemiplegic migraine. So they're attributing a form of aura, or saying that it is a form of aura, and then saying that that is only a specific type of migraine. I don't get hemiplegic migraines. Hemiplegic is just one side gets really weak, but I do get what I would classify as motor aura, where like my body becomes paralyzed. I don't see how that would fit under visual. That definitely wouldn't fit under language. And then, I mean, maybe it would fit under sensory because of the numbness and tingling, and that does lead to weakness, but like, does that really count? So I found that a little bit confusing because if it's a type of aura, then how is it a type of migraine? Do they mean that only people of that type of migraine can get that type of aura? So that got me doing some digging and I'm going to let you know what I found when I was digging. And spoiler alert, it's a bunch of, like, I think the doctors are really confused, honestly. I think that's what it comes down to. And that's really concerning because this is the third most prevalent illness in the world. Something like one in four households has, like, someone with migraine in it. And up to 30% of women in their lifetime experience a migraine attack. So you would think that with it being so popular, we would have a better understanding of it. But this is a big problem with migraines in general. They're just really misunderstood and they're really under, um, they're really under researched. So I'm going to spend the rest of this video telling you about the weird types of migraines that I've found and weird types of auras because it doesn't seem like there's really any consensus on actual types. So there's type four. I'm going to call it other. It is tripod o'clock. I've got my computer here so we can pull up some stats for you. Ah, it's a touch screen. Don't touch the screen. I'm so bad at getting this consistent. I'm going to make sure that I say this in every single video, but make sure that you get evaluated by your doctor because Yes, all of these are migraine symptoms according to places like Mayo Clinic, but you might be having a stroke. So you really need to go talk to your doctor. Make sure you get all your brain scans. Make sure everything is tip-top shape in there before you're just like, don't worry, it's a migraine. Careful. The only true way to know that it's not MS, a stroke, or a brain tumor is to get those scans done and be totally evaluated by a doctor. Please do it. I talk with my hands a lot, especially on camera, and I did some gardening right before this, so I'm like full of dirt. Oops. Try to hide them. Mayo Clinic does define motor aura as the fourth type of aura, but I wasn't able to find very much information about it, other than information that was kind of confusing and said that it went along with hemiplegic migraine, like I mentioned before. Migraine Pal agrees with Mayo Clinic, saying that a motor aura is just one side of the body, the hemiplegic migraine. And Migraine Betty goes on to say that retinal migraine is when you get an aura in just one eye. Hey guys, this is Jen from the future. I just wanted to pop in because memory loss is super fun. I'm currently editing this video, and while I was editing, I found a note that I left myself that I completely forgot about. It turns out while I was recording this video yesterday, I didn't find this information on the Mayo Clinic website, but the sticky note says some information that I said I found from Mayo Clinic. I really wanna make sure that I'm doing my due diligence for you guys. It's really important to me that I'm thorough. And so I looked and looked and looked, dig, 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 and eventually found a Mayo Clinic video on YouTube. From this Mayo Clinic video, I was able to find some things that I didn't run into on the website while I was recording the original video that you're watching right now, that I'm editing right now. Very weird. So I have a couple more things to throw in. The first thing is that this Mayo Clinic doctor says that there are already three genes that are identified to be associated with motor aura. That motor aura can leave you clumsy to paralyzed, but again, that that's only on one side. And also that it can last from minutes to several days. 
those are very interesting facts. I still don't feel like it clears up what that means mine are because I do get 100% both sides, but at least there's something. So back to the video. Now get this. The thing that I'm technically diagnosed with is migraine with brainstem aura, which is also known as basilar aura, basilar type headache, basilar migraine, basilar artery migraine, because they used to think it has to do with the basilar artery. Now it's sort of brainstem aura, but then there are places that say that doesn't exist and all of it is just migraine with aura. I wish I could find the thing that I found before that said that basal or migraine doesn't exist or brainstem aura doesn't exist. I believe it was Mayo Clinic, but I'm not totally sure. Don't quote me on that. Are you ready for literally the worst stat ever from the American Migraine Foundation? There are 39 million people living with migraine. There are about 1,500 to 2,000 headache specialists. And that's headache specialists, not even migraine specialists. So it's no wonder nobody knows anything about migraines, and it's no wonder when I ask my doctor about all these things, they're totally misdiagnosing and mistreating my migraine. For example, when I was looking at complex or complicated migraine on Mayo Clinic, they said that people who have migraine with aura should not be treated with the typical migraine acute medicines like triptans. I have migraine with aura, but I took triptans. So why did my doctor give me triptans? Or is Mayo Clinic not with it? This seems like it would be a pretty important question to answer because of out of the 39 million people who have migraine, anywhere between 15 and 30% get aura, again, depending who you ask. So why don't we have a consensus on this yet? Like, why isn't there more research going on? It makes me really thankful that when I search for these things, there's stuff like the Migraine Research Foundation pops up, there's American Migraine Foundation, there's um, the American Headache Society. I'm really thankful that there are groups of people who are coming together and trying to spread knowledge and combine everything to give us more and better treatment options and also more appropriate ones. So now I'm very curious to find out if it's possible for one patient to just have like hella types of migraine or I'm wondering if different places are naming the same thing with different names. But I think it is a pretty big problem because this is really confusing for me and I know my symptoms better than anyone. And it's absolutely gotta be confusing for the doctors who are trying to diagnose patients and explain what could happen with their particular type of migraine. So really my heart just goes out to everyone who's trying to figure this out, obviously the patients for what we're suffering with, but also the doctors, like there's no way that this is easy to keep track of. Sorry, I keep looking down. I'm like, <laughs> I've got my laptop here and I'm, yeah, I just, I can't believe that a disease that's so prevalent is so misunderstood. I feel like throughout this Aura series, things have gone from super concrete and just slowly fallen apart, but that kind of seems to be normal. Like, the more typical your migraines are, the easier they are to diagnose, and then the weirder you are, the more, like, weird and fuzzy the diagnosis process gets. I hope that this video and this entire Aura series helped you more than it made you confused. It honestly just made me more confused. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments below if I made this worse or if I clarified anything. If you're confused about your symptoms, you are definitely not alone. This disease is a beast and it's weird and even the experts don't seem to agree on things. I think what's really important as a migraine patient isn't to focus on what type of aura you have, but rather, is this a type of aura? Is this a migraine symptom? Is it normal for the condition that I have been diagnosed with? As always, I really appreciate the time that you took to watch this. I hope it was helpful even though it was scattered. Hopefully, at the very least, you're now aware that all sorts of weird stuff can happen as your aura, but throw a comment down below and let me know how you're feeling. I'm wishing you a migraine-free weekend and I'll see you next week.